guys, it's Summer and Judah. Today we're going to be reading a story about Little Red Riding Hood. This story is called Red Riding Hood Was Rotten. Alright, and it's as told by the wolf. Honestly, Red Riding Hood was rotten. The story of Little Red Riding Hood as told by the wolf. Chomp, chomp. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just finishing my lunch. My name's Wolf, Big Bad Wolf. You may have heard the story of Little Red Riding Hood about a girl and her granny. Seems everyone has. My tale is different. Did I say tail? I meant tail. Once upon a time, I ran out of food completely. The cupboards were bare, the freezer too, and I'd eaten every last vegetable and fruit in the garden. Every one. Other wolves might have lunched on little forest critters, chipmunks, bunnies, squirrels, but I'm a vegetarian. That's right, I don't eat meat. Well, I, I try not to. I love apples, honey crisp, pink lady, golden delicious, any kind really, but sadly it was a long time until apple harvest. I hadn't eaten in weeks. My stomach growled and howled. It moaned and groaned. It even roared. Then my nose took over. Sniff, sniff. I took a whiff. What was it? A girl? Sniff, sniff. I took a whiff. What was it? Cake? Butter? In this forest, I had to investigate. And there she was, Little Red Riding Hood. She looked as plump and juicy as a big sweet apple. Little Red waved her cape. Isn't it pretty, she said. Yeah, I said. Aren't I pretty, she said. She was admiring herself in that puddle. With this cape, she said, I'm even prettier than usual. Boy, someone sure was full of herself. My stomach growled. Little Red Riding Hood twirled a strand of hair. Mother says the cape looks grand with my skin. My skin shines like pearls, or the meat of a ripe apple, I thought, licking my chomps. Remember, I hadn't eaten in weeks. Weeks. Time to chomp. But then Little Red said, I can't wait until Granny sees how pretty I am today. I'm bringing her cake and butter from my mother. My stomach howled. Two meals, I thought. Granny for breakfast, Little Red for lunch, and a cake and butter for dessert. Where does Granny live, I asked. Little Red pointed. Down there, in the clearing, the brown house. I knew that house, and I had a plan. Let's play a game, I said. Little Red smiled. I'm awesome at games. I bet you are. You take this path, I'll take that path, and let's see who arrives at Granny's first. <laughs> I will, she said. I'm the prettiest and the fastest. I bet you are, I said. My stomach moaned. Before it groaned, I ran. No one knows the forest like I do. I chose the shorter path. Sniff, sniff, I took a whiff. What was it? Apple air freshener? Tap, tap. I knocked on the door. Who's there? Called out a voice. Your granddaughter, I squeaked. I brought you cake and butter from Mother. Doors open, Granny said. Granny tugged at her nightcap. Green, she said. Isn't it pretty? Pretty like a Granny Smith apple, I thought. Aren't I pretty, Granny said. You must have heard the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <coughs> Bless you. Well, it's true. My stomach roared. What's that noise, Granny said. Chomp, chomp. I had to eat her. She was no Macintosh apple, but not too bad. I still felt hungry, though. Tap, tap. Little Red knocked on the door. Who's there? I called out, crawling into Granny's bed. Your granddaughter, Little Red said. I brought you cake and butter from Mother. Doors open, I said. Little Red walked in and caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror. Isn't my cake pretty, Granny? She said. Aren't I pretty? I clenched my teeth. Granny, Little Red said, what deep dark eyes I have. Mm-hmm, I said, the color of apple seeds. Granny, she said, what perfect ears I have. Mm-hmm, 
my set shaped like sharply cut apple slices. Granny, she said, what pretty red lips I have. Mm-hmm, I said, red delicious. Granny, she said, what lovely skin I have. Chomp, chomp. I ate her up. What can I say? Things look different when you're hungry. She was no Fuji or Crispin Apple. In fact, to be honest, she was a bit rotten, but she was better than nothing. The end. Alrighty, so that's a pretty silly take on Little Red Riding Hood. So for your challenge today, I challenge you to create a path all the way from Little Red Riding Hood's house to Granny's house, the shortest path possible so that she can beat the wolf there. Now the way that you're gonna do this is either by making it on an incline or using your own breath like through a straw or simply blowing to encourage whatever item you choose to travel through the path. So you'll need something that rolls, something like a marble or a small ball, something like this could work. Um, but then you also need to create the path. You can use things like uh, toilet paper rolls that are cut in half. I'm sure you have a couple empty toilet paper rolls lying around. You could use paper towel rolls cut in half. You could also just build walls out of cardboard to guide whatever your object is around the path. And then your path, remember, needs to either be on an incline so gravity can do the work for you, or you'll need to apply a force to it to make that path go. Think like a Rube Goldberg machine. That's sort of what we're going for with this. I'm really interested to see what you guys are able to make and how you're able to get Little Red to her granny's house safely. Even if she's rotten, she doesn't deserve to be eaten, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. Jude and I had a lot of fun, and we'll see you guys. Oh, shout out again to the Carr family. If you guys haven't seen the stool that they made, you need to go look it up on my Instagram. I posted a couple pictures. They were so creative using PVC pipes and old cardboard and duct tape and zip ties to make a really sturdy stool that I'm pretty sure just about anybody could sit on and it wouldn't break. So way to go, guys. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you guys on Monday.